If you enjoy this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for just $5 a month. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner for more information. Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. Today, we are going to dive inside of the project of Paper Planes, the second single from my latest EP, Autonomous, out now on Mousetrap. This video has been highly requested. It originally wasn't going to happen, but then when Paper Planes went viral on Spotify and got over 100,000 plays, um, I thought, let's go ahead and do this video. Paper Planes is now the most popular song off of Autonomous with over 120,000 Spotify streams, which I'm very thankful for. And it kind of um, made me, uh, I guess, feel more comfortable with making this softer and more experimental music instead of making bangers all the time. So in my future projects, I think I'm going to be going down and exploring that a little bit more and making some more ambient, softer, more timeless music um, and um, your support on paper planes really helped with that so a lot of people have told me this is their favorite song from autonomous and it's actually my favorite song from the EP and um, I'm very happy to be doing this video today to show you guys what's inside of the project of paper planes so without any further ado we're gonna jump right in if you haven't heard the song you can click in the upper right hand corner right now and go and listen to the song on Mousetrap's YouTube channel, I think it is. And um, yeah, listen to it and then jump back here and then we'll dive into the project. Awesome guys, so now that you've heard the song, um, if you follow my instructions and listen to it or if you've already heard it elsewhere, we're gonna jump right in and then start breaking this thing down from start to finish. So let's go ahead and play it from the beginning uh, just to get things rolling and we'll start breaking down some of the introduction elements. So let's go ahead and find the element that's underneath everything, that marimba sound. And that's really one of the core elements of this intro, and I think it's what creates this really cool um, rhythm throughout the beginning of the song. So let's go ahead and solo that. So as you can see, I used the Ableton Tension instrument here. And I think I'm a big advocate uh, for stock plugins. I think that a lot of the Ableton instruments go very underutilized, and I think there's a lot to be explored in the built-in instruments into Ableton. So I use that um, to create this cool plucky sound. I think I started with the big kalimba preset and I've made some adjustments to it to get this kind of plucky marimba sound. We got this three beat ping pong delay that's creating this cool um, spacious atmospheric effect and then there's also an auto pan on there. Um, everything's getting side chained to the kick and you're going to notice that throughout. I'm not going to go too in detail on these things, but I'm going to give you a look at every single channel. So we have this EQ high passing it and we have an, a filter in some sections as you can see if we enable automation mode, um, it filters down in the parts where it doesn't need to be as present, which is most of the song. We have a second layer to this marimba. Um, if we solo that, it's the serum right here. We can get it open. There it is. And as you can see, it's a pretty basic sound. We have a sine wave and a triangle wave with a cutoff filter doing a really, really cool plucky pattern, same pattern as the marimba, and it's adding a really nice tone. Uh, we have a delay and a reverb built in to Ableton here. And we have some auto pan doing a similar thing as the other marimba. So let's go ahead and take a look at another element here. You can take a look at the vocal, which is very pinnacle to this intro section as well. We have a ambient vocal. I think this is from a Black Octopus pack, and I've gone ahead and transposed it and stretched it um, to make it a little bit less recognizable. The thing about vocals is that they're very apparent, and you can tell um, what they are if you don't do enough work on them. So this is the vocal. There's two layers. And in the real song, you can barely hear that. It's almost like a background element. Um, I have it way turned down in the mix, negative 10 decibels here, plus an additional negative 7.1 there. 
and we have a high pass and a low shelf on there or a high shelf just cutting off some of the uh, the top information there we have a Haas effect doing its thing to separate it in the stereo image and then on the second version we have the exact same thing except for this one is tuned up 11 instead of one down so we have an octave so let's go ahead and give this thing a play in the context We have this clap, which is pretty obvious. Um, it's essentially a clap sample uh, with a reverb and delay with a compressor. Not too difficult. If I mute these, you can see it becomes a very different sound. Put the compressor and the, the delay back on, and we got this. The theory behind this compressor here is to elevate some of the lower um, echoes of this ping pong delay and bring them up to the level a compressor is designed to reduce dynamics in a sound so we're trying to remove the dynamic between the quieter sounds and the top higher louder sounds and bring them to an equal level so we're doing that here at a ratio of two to one okay so let's go to our percussion layer here and see what we're dealing with here And that's what's creating that really cool um, glitchy kind of atmospheric effect used throughout the song. We have a few layers to this. Let's go ahead and listen to them all. We have this guy. And as you can see, these are panned accordingly to each sample. This one's going hard right with some reverb on it. This one's going hard left, transposed up with some reverb on it. And then this guy here is somewhere in between. Uh, let me take a look. This is 34 um, ticks to the left. And then we have this guy, which is 21 ticks to the right. We have this, which is a loop that I cut into a small little chop. And then I have an auto pan doing 100% pan at a rate of 79.9%. Um, or hertz rather not percent and then we have a uh, vault hall of room doing some reverb on there i think last of all we have this little uh, i guess it's almost like a wood block but it's a little bit softer than a wood block it's hard to explain what that is it's from organic elements by black octopus and it's transposed up 13 semitones so we have this and i trigger that last element that we discussed I think it's this one right after the the clap um, in a lot of places throughout the song so it accentuates the clap a little bit so we go yeah come to think of it this sounds a lot like the um, it's like a Lego Star Wars sound <laughs> did not notice that when I was making the song so that's looking like most of the intro. We have this intro kick, which is doing a basic four to the floor. Then we have a um, an eighth note placed on the second to last beat of the bar right here. In between. Boom, boom. At a slightly less velocity, so you get a little bit of movement there. We have uh, Leviathan kick, transpose up two, compressor low pass, etc. We don't want it to be in the forefront, so we aren't going to give it any top end. And that was my methodology there. Okay, next up we have this accent kick, which is kind of doing a similar thing to what these little kicks in there are doing, but it's just doing it louder. So we're getting uh, this. Apologies for all those keyboard shortcut issues. I just switched back to PC from Mac because my Mac's giving me a lot of issues with Mojave um, and the new graphics driver. So side note, if you see this, it's an accident. <laughs> okay, so here we go. And this is panned to the right, 18. It's adding a really cool groove in the bottom end. And with all of the percussion that you hear, um, we get this really cool back and forth motion. We have one more element, which is this metal tap, and that's creating that uh, 16th note feel. It's 
getting transposed up and down throughout the entire phrase. Kind of in the background, really nice. We have this vocal element here. Let's give this thing a listen. It's actually not a vocal, it's an atmosphere. And I'm just looping the same part of it over and over. We got a nice high pass on there, a nice auto pan to give it some space in the mix. Mix up and then decay up. Sounds like some birds in there or something. I think it's from a full clip, like you're sitting in like a um, an area and you hear some nature sounds or something. I think it's a nature sound clip. And the panning around sounds really cool. It's almost like a Midnight by Coldplay. Cool. So that's the main elements of our intro section. We have, um, let's see what this is. Oh my. Ah, yes. This cool sound I made in Serum. We have two sine waves and we have an FM from sine wave one to sine wave two. This has two unison on it with some detune. And we have a filter with a resonance um, turned up and the resonance is being automated. That's what's creating that little. Very cool sound. Phaser and reverb to place it into the stereo image a little bit more, especially the phaser. Phasers have a tendency to do that. And then there's some ping pong delay to even further it into the, the stereo image because of how stereo ping pong delay is. That's cool. And then I have my vocals, which is the only other place in the song it's used besides the very end of the song um, where I actually sing. This is a um, just a little vocal pad that I did. And I wanted to end the, the album. A lot of people ask me why I have the vocals at the end of the song only. I wanted it to be the climax of the EP. I wanted it to end on just my vocals and piano and some pads, just like to close everything out and, and to kind of give a melancholic ending to the album. So that was the reasoning for that. We'll get into those vocals in a minute. Let's go ahead and check out these vocals. <sighs> So there's two layers to this. Um, this is our standard layer. We're gonna go ahead and solo that first. This is at pitch, or at the level I recorded in. Recording pitch, I guess. Got some delay and reverb on it. And take a look at my reverb settings. Not too much. Then I have a compressor doing a similar thing as I was saying before. It's bringing some of the, or it's reducing some of the dynamics between the lower and higher um, sections of this song, decibel-wise. And then um, I don't know why there's this blank EQ here. That must have been an afterthought that I never fully actualized. Okay, and then there is a second layer of the vocal, which is tuned up, oh, I'm sorry, down a fifth. And we're getting something like this. <laughs> Uh, so we're creating this really cool harmonic sound to that intro section. Go ahead and give this thing a listen in the context of the mix. And as that vocal comes in, we introduce this do 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 element. <laughs> my, my track titling is pristine, I know. And um, let's go ahead and give this a check. So. Very simple, um, two sine waves again, creates a very, very soft sound. And we have an envelope controlling the volume of these elements instead of doing a cutoff. Because when you do a cutoff automation, you, you end up with a lot of high information. I just wanted these to be very plucky and almost like a marimba. As you can tell, I really like marimbas and plucky sounds. As you can see, there's a cutoff automation going through here. So it starts out with less high information and then you end up with a lot of top information like here. And you have a Haas effect going in and then you have a high pass as well. So we have some phaser, reverb, etc. Again, setting it into the stereo image a little bit. 
Phaser has a really good way to um, to do that. One of the best effects for setting things into the the uh, stereo image. So here's our ride. We have a ride right before that that big break, and that's just a regular ride with some auto pan, some reverb, and um, it's just doing quarter notes. We cut off the last one because we do a reverse clap again with that option control thing. And that is a sample with a sample reversed into itself. I think I reversed the sample and then turned it down. Yeah, down negative eight. And then I cut off the transient of it. So the actual transient of the clap I reversed, this part is right here. And I actually cut that off. So it's a clap reversed into itself with the transient cut off of it. So you get this. And you get that right after the ride. It's very like dead mouse. Very cool. And that is essentially the bulk of the intro. We have a few more elements here. Let's go ahead and listen to this, which is a noise, very standard. It's coming. White noise with some pan, sidechain, pause effect, reverb. As you can see, all it is is an ARP white noise in Serum. You could probably do this with analog too. I just didn't. Um, what else do we got? Low voice. Let's give this thing a listen. I think this is that that lower, like more atmospheric element. Yeah. I don't fully remember how I made this. This was almost a year ago now. I think what I did was I took um, one of my vocals and I tuned it down, added some reverb to it, and then resampled it um, with a low pass on it and stretched it perhaps. Um, that's what it sounds like to me. And um, honestly, I can't recall what else I did to that, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Okay, so that is the intro. Let's give that part a listen, then we'll dive into the breakdown. segues is this nice little rain stick sound the beautiful rain stick of course I think it's just a splice rain stick with some reverb some panning Haas effect and sidechain may have a few more elements in here this guy right here the lead This is a really, really cool sound. If we go ahead and open this up, we have a basic shapes uh, saw wave with two unison, a little bit of detune, and then we have a sine wave um, just doing a single voice. And there's no detune, obviously. So we have a filter um, being controlled by LFO3. That's creating that very slow sense of motion. Um, we're going at a four bar count over this little saw or triangle curve here. Controlling the resonance and the cutoff. We also have a sine wave um, doing control on the fine tune of the each oscillator, actually both oscillators. And we're doing it at a rate of an eighth note with an eighth note rise. So after one eighth note, it will start vibrating essentially the fine tune of both of these oscillators at one eighth note rate. So that's kind of like a uh, vibrato if you're singing. Uh, um, similar idea. And it starts only after an eighth note. So the beginning transient of each note gets a lot of, um, it's almost a perfect pitch, and then it kind of drifts out of pitch um, with a small LFO. Cool. So that's the basic of the sound itself. We have a zero square adding a little bit of, um, I guess, digital distortion 
in in form of like bit crush and we have a little bit of delay and reverb that's cool we have a compressor doing the same thing as always reducing the dynamics between the reverb tail and the actual source sound creates that cool compressed reverb effect that i love we have a side chain again to the kick and if you want to see my video on compressors which really helps um, explain what compressors do and how they function. You might want to click on the link in the upper right hand corner right now and check out my video explaining how compressors work and that will really alleviate the um, the cloudiness of how a sidechain works if you're curious. Okay so we have a auto filter doing that little sweep in and then we have a high pass um, here and a little bit more reverb here that we actually automate out. So I'm using reverb here to put things into the atmosphere and then dial them back in for the listener um, during these part kind of sections here. Cool, so that's sounding good. Um, there's also a pitch bend that goes from the very smallest amount of pitch bend you can get to the zero point, which is essentially perfect pitch. And um, as you can see in Serum, I have this set to negative two semitones, which is the default. So we're going from negative two semitones down to zero, or the root, and um, it sounds like this. This lead took kind of uh, a lot of development. I don't really know how I came up with it. It's more just um, fiddling around. I think all of the main notes land on the chord progression of the song, but all of the little extra notes are just kind of randomly placed. And um, they ended up sounding really good. So that's that. That's our lead. And um, let's go ahead and unsolo it and see what else we got in this breakdown. <laughs> Again, we have this nice ambient bird nature sound element going through this part. We have the filter kind of sweeping down to remove some of the top end and pull it out of the listener's attention. By removing top end, you start to pull things back into the background of the mix and it takes it away from the attention of the listener. Really, really cool like psychology thing you can do. Um, higher frequencies are perceived as closer to you and lower frequencies can be perceived as farther away. And um, you can utilize that in a mix. So that's what we're doing here. We're pulling the top end out to push the element back into the mix. So, to give the focus to the main lead, which is coming in right now. And we have largely the same thing here, um, except for we introduced this nice bass sound, and that's this guy here. And again, another serum bass. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're going do no no. And if you want, you can study the sound design. It's very, very simple. We have two saw waves. One is FM to the other, and the one that's FM has two unison voices and a little bit of voicing detuning to add a cool little uh, stereo separation to that layer. So sounds cool. We have a cutoff filter here that's being modulated very slowly by a two bar LFO. And um, it's also controlling a little bit of FM on that. Again, this is not really making that big of a difference, but it, it works in the context of the song. And largely all the elements are the same here from the intro. It's just used in a different way. We have this noise coming up, and then it gets abruptly cut off, for example. Rain sticks back. With this nice little arp, uh, let's give this thing a listen. Kind of this nice little floaty arp that comes in and out during the breakdown sections of the song. Trying to launch it. And we have this nice little basic mini, it's almost like a sine wave with edges. <laughs> um, and that's our, that's our wavetable here. And we're doing a little bit of LFO modulation on the cutoff of the filter, which is MG Low 12, which is a Moog Low Pass filter. Okay, so we have the phaser 
uh, delay, reverb, standard stuff that I've used on pretty much everything in the song so far. And um, that's that little ARP element that you hear throughout the song. I'm going to go ahead and unsolo it so you can hear it in the song context. <laughs> We also have this sine arp element that's introduced in the breakdown. Let's go ahead and give this a listen. I'm going for these very like Apex Twin, Boards of Canada kind of sounds. Very, um, I don't want to say acidy and analog, but kind of. We have a nice little sine wave uh, with a second sine wave. Again, FM from the first, a little bit of unison with a cutoff and a resonant filter on there. Cool. Delay, reverb, etc. There we go. Side chain, low pass to push it into the background a little bit. Not quite a low pass, just a high shelf cut. And then we have a uh, auto filter panning up. Cool. That's largely it. Um, we have this guitar element. It doesn't really sound like a guitar after what I did to it. I tuned it up, I believe. I don't know if this is the original sample or not. And I added a nice little fade, as you can see there. We have a high pass and a low shelf again, or high shelf with a reduction. And then we have a ping pong delay at a three beat count. And then we have a side chain reverb, etc., And it adds this nice little atmospheric element again. Same stuff as before. This time, though, we have a stronger kick. Um, we have a few layers to this kick. Um, let's go ahead and give it a listen. So our bottom layer is an 808, a specifically 808.12 from Leviathan 2. And then we have a second layer to that kick drum, which is this guy, which is kick 2. And I'm synthesizing um, a different kick for this part. Cool stuff. Um, pretty standard stuff. It's just a sine wave uh, with a very short little click at the front going from a B to an A and then we're going down to a B and then to an F. And then we have a, a decent amount of length on a click but it's turned down so you don't hear it as much. We then have a click top layer that's introduced in the drop which we'll get to momentarily. Um, and the drop in this song really isn't a drop per se. It's more just a continuation of the breakdown. So let's go ahead and give this a listen. All the percussion here is the same for the most part. Um, there's a few more elements, which is this guy. Similar idea as before, it's just various percussion sounds tuned around. This one's really cool, very grainy and nice. Um, I used this little grain sample and then I did an OTT to accentuate some of the top and mid end, um, as you can see here. Top mid is turned up a lot, 100% depth, and we're getting a decent amount of high end out of that. We're then uh, using a vintage limiter for some warmth. And then we have a transient master to really accentuate how sharp that is. We have a uh, delay here, which is creating the very quick pan around the head effect. Cool. The rest of these are pretty standard, just little elements that are panned around and placed cleverly. Now in the drop, we introduced this pedal steel. I guess we did it here as well, which is just a held note. It's a saw wave with a little bit of detune going on the fine tune at an eighth note rate with a sine wave. And we're using an envelope on the cutoff so that every initial hit gives a little bit more high information than the bottom. So that's that for this element. It's essentially what a pedal, pedal steel sounds like, um, if you've ever heard one of those. Let's give this top element a listen coming into our drop. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't end up using it in this section. Um, it's mostly just tuned down. I use this to introduce the, the four to the floor section. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at another element here. We have a few extra percussion elements like this, which is just a very clever pattern with like a clav. Um, you probably wouldn't even notice that if, if I removed it. And, um, most of the other elements are largely the same as the breakdown. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hi-hats. Um, pretty simple. We have this hi-hat here which is doing a kind of shuffled feeling with velocity. And as you can see, the velocity kind of goes up and down, accentuating the ands, which is the every other eighth note feeling, which is a traditional house hi-hat feeling. But we're going for a, every 16th note. We're just accentuating these ones by making them the hardest hitting velocity. So we have an open hi-hat actually doing the ands, which is this, which is every other eighth note. That's easy peasy. We just have a high pass, a little bit of reverb, and then we have a sample. As you can see, I like to trim my samples down to make them short and sweet. Doesn't need to carry on forever. So there's our pedal steel. Um, we have our noise. We have a ghost kick that's triggering our noise. I think that's the only thing it's doing. Uh, everything else is triggered by other elements of the song. Okay, we have a pop. Just creating a cool groove. And everything else for this part is largely the same as what we've covered so far. It's just everything opens up. The cutoffs open up, um, they turn up. Um, the the volume on the, the vocal pad kind of comes up a little bit and you get this really cool floaty feeling. It's inspired by liquid drum and bass, but obviously it's at 128, so it's just a standard 128 breakbeat pattern with a liquid drum and bass feel. Okay, so we have an impact here, which is a Leviathan impact. Very, very quiet. I'm just using it for a high transient, and then we're using a, uh, I guess, an auto pan at a unfixed rate it's at 21 hertz and um, it's going around us so by the end of the transient you hear it on your left and I kind of just do the exact same thing as I did in the first breakdown or the first intro section same sounds just in a different order You can hear that arc coming in. You can see right there. And that big oh my sound um, breaks it down for us. We have our rain stick coming in. Then we have a key change here, which makes for an interesting feeling. It's not quite a key change, it's like a progression change. I think it maintains the same key. I think my it's doing the pitch bend glitch thing, yeah. Yeah. So instead of resolving to our, our, our note that we've been going to on our bass sound, which is, let's see, it's a, it's a B. Instead of going to our B, we go to a G. So it's kind of up a fifth, I believe. kind of hinting at like a nice little rising effect by using a higher note and a higher chord progression here we're kind of taking away the melancholic floating feeling and giving us like a hopeful tram transmission here Dude, you don't expect that G but it comes out up to our A and in this part you get a little bit of lead change too I think the melody on the lead actually goes up a little bit more than normal here. We usually go to but this part it goes cool and that that works really well. And that's the main part of that section. We introduce this pluck sound which is is a um, nice little transitionary effect. And it builds into that eighth note feeling um, progressive section, which comes next. This little like micro build here. 
I didn't want to do a full on build because it's not like a drop, it's just like another section, like a B section. So you lose some of the elements that were there previously and then you get that. We have one element here that transitions there and that's that vocal thing I did. I kind of did this cool thing and then we added some chorus and some delay. Creates this cool like underwater feeling um, super processed vocal and we're, we're even exaggerating that with this EQ by cutting all the top and bottom off. We're just getting this like mid-tone like underwater feeling sound. Very cool. <laughs> And then we get to that high lead section that we saw earlier, if I can find it. I think it is this guy. And this is kind of the pinnacle part of the, the big house section. Give you a look at the sound design. It's a square wave, two voices with a little bit of detune. And we have a single voice on the second uh, oscillator which is a sine wave which is tuned up an octave from the first one again we have a little bit of pitch bend on the the fine tune of these via a LFO it's giving us a vibrato effect and um, we have a nice little envelope too with a little bit of attack time to create that cool little almost like a dun, dun, but it's not like a dunk it's like a rung um, because we're delaying that that hit um, onto the cutoff Cool, we have a down sample to add some little grit, some digital distortion, if you will. Almost like a bit crush, but not, it's like a bit crush, but not um, aggressive enough to be a bit crush. Um, so we aren't using enough mix or drive to do that, and then we're using a reverb like that. And we use like these little cool counter melodies in this section to accentuate our big like housey bits. Again, that vocal is making up a large part of this. But for this part, we actually introduce a new pad, which is that big housey pad, which is this guy. And I think the magic of this one is all in the actual writing itself. The chords lend themselves so well to this pad. And the way they contrast to the rest of the song is very nice. I think I hint at a seventh chord here instead of going for the, the direct minor. Um, and it makes it really, really interesting and, and gives us this cool, like, old school feeling. Um, there's this really awesome uh, envelope controlling this cutoff, which is creating this slow fall, like a doo, doo, like that. And again, I have a little bit of automation on our fine tune some voices to create that big super soft feeling but we're not quite opening all the way we're only opening it slightly to give it a little bit more you know melancholy if we opened it all the way and we made it a big super saw it would be very in your face and it would be very like big droppy i didn't want to do that i just wanted to open it a little bit to give a little bit of energy but keep it dialed back enough to make it kind of softer very cool and with the side chain against that kick drum you get this nice little pumpy feeling and for this part I changed the note of the pedal steel as well to harmonize with that I'm gonna go ahead and solo these two together uh, if I can find the right key dun, 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 dun. But this one goes to the da, which is like a different note than you would expect there. I think the chord progression in this part really is interesting and I'm, I'm very proud of it. Um, we have this clap that we introduce here, which is the same clap as the first drop. I don't know if I covered it in the first drop. We'll just take a quick look. We got this nice little first clap and a second clap and they're slightly shifted as you can see, like a millisecond before. And we got a compressor 
and a reverb, a little bit of Haas effect, high pass, and I think this is a, yeah, a limiter, maximizer. Um, the reason we use a simple delay here um, for a Haas effect, I didn't want to make this a predominant element of the song and the percussion of the song. Um, I wanted the kick to really be the main focus here. And in softer songs like this, you don't want a big snare or clap. So I kind of put it off to the sides a little bit, added some reverb, turned it down in the mix, and made it really supportive instead of making it a main element. <laughs> Those melodies are so beautiful on, on this guy. So I think this song really, it's not as complicated as you would think. It's just a lot of good melodic writing that lends itself together um, really well. And I think that's like a Dead Mouse thing too. A lot of his stuff has maybe 15 tracks or 20 tracks and it sounds amazing because of how he handles his chord writing and his melody writing, which is a technique that I like to implore in my own stuff too make the track itself as simple as possible, as, mi as minimal tracks as you possibly can, make every track count, and then make the melodies and the chords you use really carry the song. And that's my methodology. <laughs> reintroduce that cool Boards of Canada lead. And that cool sign arp. And then for this like little breakdown section, I start removing elements. As you can see, I bring up the reverb on this lead to kind of push it into the background a little bit more as we discussed a minute ago. For this section, we use a different rhythm. Feels like a dubstep. And obviously, I use that on all three of our kick layers here. And um, we get this halftime feeling at the end to really, really slow it down. Everything else largely stays the same. Cool little shouty vocal in the background. doing its thing. This is the same melody as we used right before the drop on the first part. And we're starting to filter everything out as you can see make the lead really stand out and be its own character in the song. And you can really hear that, that bird. I think I was listening to the song and I heard the bird and it really inspired me and I, I got this feeling when I heard it um, and that's what inspired the lyrics of the song. I also wrote this song, or the basis of this song, on a plane, and um, that's one of the reasons why it's called Paper Planes. So, here come the vocals. I use a lot of these little pitch dives on the lead, too. Okay, without any further ado, let's get to the vocals. So there's two layers to this vocal, as well as a vocoder. Um, the main elements are, let's see, we have this bottom layer. And 
I think both of these elements, no, only the bottom element has the vocoder on it. So let's, let's go ahead and remove that and see what it sounds like dry. Keep on moving, gaining altitude, high up with the birds, fly into the moon. I think I recorded this at like two or three in the morning and everybody was asleep. It was in my old place. I had the, the uh, screen door open and I was just looking outside and I kind of whispered it and that's why it came out so cool, I think. Keep on moving, gaining altitude. Nice little delay, but not too much where it's actually distracting. Um, that's one thing you can get away with, or you can get out of hand with, I should say, is using too much delay and reverb. It becomes distracting, and you don't want to do that. So I'm using only 70%, and I'm using it only on this like mid-high frequency. So we're only delaying some of the... I guess the upper harmonics of that, that vocal, it's not like the full body of the vocal that's getting delayed and we're not even doing that much of it for that long, even with a 35% feedback. Then we have a 22% uh, reverb with a decently long decay time and a low high cut because we don't want a lot of top information. So we've got that. Gaining altitude. And it sounds good, but I think it really becomes magical when we start to trigger it from our vocoder key, which is this guy. And um, we can go ahead and check out these chords. Keep on moving, gaining altitude. I hope with the birds, fly into the moon. So I, I went for these very melancholic chords here. Um, some of the notes really harmonize well with the vocal and some of them don't. And um, that was intentional. So. As you can hear, this first one's kind of dissonant. Keep on moving, and then this one kind of sits very well with it. And the third one does as well. And the fourth one kind of goes down. Let me just get a repeat of that. But I think the, the, the chords used here are really what make this part magical. We have a top vocal as well, which is a harmony element, which is this guy. Keep on moving, gaining altitude, high up with the birds. Which is the same vocal tuned up five semitones. So it's a nice little harmony here. Let's go ahead and solo both of these. And this is what you get. Keep on moving, gaining altitude. To the moon. Okay, that's cool. And then what really um, sits this into the song a little bit more is this bass that's under it, and it's doing the same chord I think as the bottom of our of our vocoder here, with the exception of this note which is inverted. Okay, and then with the bass it sounds like this. Okay, and then with the bass it sounds like this. Uh, if I can solo it. Go ahead and solo our whole vocal chain, and this is what you get. Keep on moving, gaining altitude. I hope with the birds, fly into the moon. So like when I was writing Autonomous, I knew that I wanted to end it on my voice and just my voice and a little bit of maybe like a supporting element. And um, this song really, um, did that for me. I think it's my favorite song that I wrote for the album, and I think probably one of my favorite songs that I've written. So, if we unsolo everything, um, it's pretty much just that what we were just listening to. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse everything um, and give this thing one final listen right here. Keep on moving, gaining altitude. But it's kind of beautiful, the contrast between this such simplistic section, such a simplistic section with only two main elements, the voice and that, that supporting bass, which is essentially just a sub. Um, and the complexity that is the rest of the track, the rest of the track is very almost convoluted in how many elements there are coming in and out. Um, and this part is just so simple and basic. And I think it's um, a really way, nice way to end the song off and a great way to end this tutorial off.
So that is Paper Planes. Um, if you enjoyed it, make sure to check out the song on Spotify and Apple Music and SoundCloud or check out my YouTube upload of it or Mousetrap's YouTube upload of it, rather. It's not on my channel. And um, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I try to make a video every week and, um, you know, I've kind of fallen off of that and I know it's it sucks, but... Um, life's getting in the way recently and uh, I'm always trying to keep new videos coming out for you guys. So make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed, consider supporting on Patreon. Um, every little bit helps and uh, some of the Patreon benefits are really cool. The lowest ones even um, have access to a thing where I work on your project files. You can send in your projects monthly on our monthly live streams and then I'll fix them up um, how I would fix them up. So Consider supporting us on Patreon and uh, make sure to like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Make sure to subscribe and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. A drill.